Hi there. I'm out of breath for two reasons, mainly because I'm completely stunned. And secondly, because I've been running around like a mad thing for hours. I've done a bit of a field, which I know to be quiet, but it's an arable field and it's just been done. But I did it anyway, and it was very, very quiet. But I did find one Roman coin, um, a lovely, a lovely cut half, funnily enough, not the best condition, little long cross or short cross, um, little Roman coin, um, William the Third, um, and a little livery button, amongst other bits and pieces. I think that may be, I thought that may be Saxon, but I'm not so sure now, but perhaps found that in that field. But that's a bloody good day. I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. That's a fantastic haul in itself, but it was hard work. That was four hours to find that. So, but I have come to a bit of pasture because this usually got horses in it and it has got an electric fence, but they've turned it right down by the sounds of it. It's not really interfering at all. And I found a little Roman coin in my second signal, not in very good condition. That one there, um, it looks to be barbarous actually. Um, well, maybe not, but it's a radiant of sorts. And this, I mean, oh my God. Third signal, I dug. Now, it's not a complete shock because I have found Anglo-Saxon things nearby, but very few of these and it's a coin. It's an Anglo-Saxon silver coin. Oh, possibly Norman. I don't know the difference between very early Norman um, and Saxon when they haven't been cleaned before I can sort of check them out. But I reckon that looks Saxon to me and I'm not going to rub it too much because you all tell me off and quite rightly sometimes. Um, but um, that is, I think, a Saxon coin, Saxon silver penny. Don't know who it is yet. We'll have to take it home and find out. But I mean, that's just gobsmacking. It's, it doesn't mean I'm upset they're not coming here earlier because that field I've really done, did it really carefully. And I got, as I said, a barbarous coin and a cut half. I mean, that's brilliant. I can't, I'm not complaining. But this field, if that's my third signal, I mean, God knows what else is in here. <sighs> I don't have time to keep going. We will come back here. If it's got no horses in it this week, we'll come back here tomorrow or the, ne or the following day. Let's go back to headquarters. We've got to, because I just don't find enough of these. I'm really, really excited. Let's go. Well, wow, what a coin. I mean, that just that just completely blew me away. I haven't found that many sacks and silver coins. I mean, God, you'd be really lucky to find one, quite honestly. It's very, very dark, but it is in quite good condition. So I got back. Now, funnily enough, I did say about Saxon and Norman coins. They are quite similar, um, especially the later ones. And as it turns out, this one is the last Saxon king. It's Edward the Confessor. So I think they are going to be very similar. Late Saxon coins and early... Um, well, he wasn't quite the last Saxon king, was he? You had Harold II, but he was only around for about three months. But if I look very quickly, the Norman kings here... Oh God, I need this these days to... to I mean, they are very, I mean, they're very similar. Um, the, 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 some of the portraits are um, sideways. Some of them are profile. Um, and, and they really could be. So, you know, it's, I think it's fair enough if, before you clean one of these to, to maybe hedge your bets and think that it, 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 it's possibly Norman as well as being Anglo-Saxon. But then, funnily enough, the later ones, they're not actually that hard to, to um, get. So I looked on the obverse and I could see um, a cross, avoided short cross type thing with pennants in between. Um, and, and on the other side, there was a king with holding a scepter in profile. So I, so I, I had a little whiz through. And if you come down to Edward the Confessor, 1042 to 1066, suddenly you'll see some of these very similar um, coins a lot with the uh, this one's actually more avoided long cross with the pellets in the middle now moving a little bit further on number 1174 trefoil quadrilateral type and there it is and you've got him holding his scepter on one side and then and you've got the um cross with the trefoil bit which are the three pellets in each quadrant and the quadrilateral type is the fact that there's a slightly starred out square um, joining the, the axes of the cross itself. 
And so that's it. That, that, that's, that's that coin. I mean, it's a silver coin of Edward the Confessor. And as I said, it is, um, it's very, very dark. I'm reluctant to try and clean that. I quite like it being dark like that. I mean, if you wanted to, and I wouldn't, I, I don't think one should particularly with very early coins. I think people, collectors and people do prefer them to be in an original condition. Now, that's not to say if it was obvious gunk and obvious stuff that I could remove, I would clean it, definitely. But from here, having just taken it all off, all, all the mud and everything off, I've got enough detail. I don't need to clean it anymore. And I don't really think that would benefit from looking nice and shiny. So I'm going to leave that. I put it on the detecting hub as well. Here you go. Um, and the usual suspects got on fairly quickly and agreed that it was a quadrilateral uh, trefoil type. But um, the great Electus, who is king of coins, um, said that he could see um, that it was Leof wine, the mania. And if you look very closely on this side, I can see L-E-E-O-F-P-I-N-E. -E -E, and I think that is Leopine um, or Leo of something or other. So that's that coin. I mean, absolutely just blown away. There's just nothing beats Saxon um, silver coins. Apart from perhaps Saxon gold coins and maybe even a Roman gold coin. I still haven't found a Roman gold coin and I probably never will. I mean, I, I really will probably never will. I'm hoping it's the one thing I really want to find. And when I do, I'll probably stop all this. No, I won't. You can't just stop metal detecting. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that. And um, let's go back to that field. Hi there. Well, as promised, I'm back two days later. It's beautiful, but it is freezing. Really, really cold. North, northerly wind. But I hope you can hear me okay. I think the wind's coming, well, the wind is coming from behind me. And it's just amazing to be here. Um, nothing groundbreaking so far. I've been here about an hour. I have found what I think must be quite a late-ish um, book class or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not very good on these, but I don't think that's particularly early. This looks to be slightly earlier. Um, it's got a bit of design on it. It's obviously a, a, a strap end of sorts or something like that. Not 100% sure, but quite nice. And then three little Roman coins. That one looks like Corrosius, even from that. And they're not in the best condition, but they, they're quite encrusted. And I think a couple of these, that's the one with the um, soldiers, soldiers and the single standard. Um, and that one there, I can see from the back where it's a bit shiny and um, that'll clean up nicely. So those three coins will clean up nicely and it's just a brilliant sign. I'm very close to electric fences. They're driving me slightly potty, um, but there's nothing we can do about that because there's horses everywhere apart from this field. And I've got a signal down here, which I'm going to use to test this little tiny microphone. Now, I can't put my earphones and the microphone in at the same time I've worked out. Not microphone speaker. I can't put my I can't have my earphones and the speaker in at the same time. So I've just plugged that in. Let's see how we get on. It's quite close to the microphone. Well, I can just about hear it. I don't know if it's being picked up by that. I and there. And a definitely a better signal there. That's two signals. That's iron. So we'll dig this. I've dug a lot of cartridges and a lot of rifle rounds. This could have been a Second World War camping ground. I don't know. Um, so we'll see how we go on the live digs. Now this has been doing this a bit. Well, it's just there. I think I may have knocked it into the hole. Yeah, I've knocked it in here. Here we go. Well, it looks like a little bit of bronze of sorts. Let's have a look. Oh, it's cold. 
don't know what that is, but it's old. An old piece of bronze, I think. Um, it looks like it might, it looks like it's got some sort of detail on it, but I can't see what this might. We'll have to clean that up. But I know, I think that's just bronze casting waste. But it made a lovely sound. Let's see if we can hear it better now. But could easily have been a Roman coin, that. But little bronze bits like this, nothing pleases me more. Nothing but good can come from little bits of bronze like that. And it does look like it's got some detail on it, but I think I might be just wishful thinking. Or oh, it's part of something. Anyway, let's get on. I'm looking forward to this. If I can get through the electric fence trouble. Well, my God, this wasn't very deep, but my God, it gave a sound. I'll show you quickly. I'll, I'll let you listen in. Um, I have to unplug this every time, but it's not too much of a palaver so far. Um, I mean, absolute dynamite. I thought it must be just one of the very more coppery sounding cartridges but it's not it's a fullest now all the roman coins i'm digging here at the moment are very um they're very encrusted with quite a heavy crust which means i it's not like the sandy soil where it's just falling off even though it is quite sandy it might have something to do with how long they've been i don't i just don't know anyway it's either magnentius or Diocletian, or Constantius, or Constantinus, I can see a nurse. Um, they all look, these follices, which were brought in by Diocletian in about 280 or something like that, 290, the emperors look very, very similar. And they're all very strong, jawed, tough looking um, um, portraits, which is exactly what they wanted them to look like. With the reign of Constantine onwards, you start getting slightly more attractive portraits and maybe portraits resembling the actual whoever they were supposed to be resembling. But this lot, Constantius, Diocletian, Magnentius, they all look much the same. So I can't tell from the, from the portrait. Anyway, we'll clean that up. I can definitely see... Oh, I, I, I just don't know. Maximian, Maximianus, that's it. So Diocletian's co-ruler. So this is one of the first follicles. Um, and I'm guessing about 300, something like that. I'm absolutely thrilled. What a lovely coin. Belter. Well, that's quite a nice... Oh, look at that. Wow. Now, we found these before. They're not particularly early, I don't think. They're 16th or 17th century. But I've never found an acorn with gilding on it. Look at that. And by the way, look, it's not gold gilding. Gilding means gold. It <laughs> drives me mad when people go, I was gold gilded. It's not, it's just gilded. And that is just gilded. Look at that. Beautiful acorn. What a fab one. I'm thrilled with that. Cool. I won't plug you in for this because it's just too wispy. I don't think there'd be anything on it but it's um it's definitely something doesn't sound very irony i've dug several things today it's interesting i've got this set up now it's quite quiet and especially with the electric fence i've actually lowered the audio response even more um, and it seems to have not the ferocity of the sound isn't coming through so much i mean quite often you, you just get a buzz, a very constant buzz. Um, not necessarily low or high pitched, but, and, but there doesn't seem any iron around it. It's just the buzz. That quite often is tiny, tiny things at depth. The, the obvious things sound obvious with this machine, but you can still keep your ears open for... for um, now that's very high pitch. It's probably lead. I'm digging a lot of lead at great depth. And you're getting much the same view, I'm afraid. The wind's quite strong. Um, so I've got my back to it. Right, so it's already nine or ten inches. It sounded like that. 
I suspect it's lead or a cartridge, a lot of cartridges, <laughs> quite deep and good stuff, quite shallow. It's still there. Whatever it is, it's not big. It's out. I'm just going to listen to it to my, just so I know. Yeah, tiny and lovely sound. I don't think that's lead. Uh, it's a sucking great chunk of the stuff. My God, but again, look. All the way down there. Uh, well, perhaps that's a pot leg of sorts. Um, it's a big old chunk of lead. Uh, massive. It looks like it's been broken there somehow. I don't think it's anything important, but I bet it's got some age to it. I very rarely do one after the other on live digs, especially when it's this cold. And I thought it was a little Roman coin. It's not. It's a little rose farthing or a royal farthing. It's just thicker than the normal ones. So that's James I or Charles I. Um, but it's again it's in lovely condition it's going to clean up absolutely beautifully it's got a bit of missing off the side there gosh there's a bit of everything in this field there really is roman saxon that acorny 17th century thing this is 16th century 17th century it's a lovely one but that gave it just a very very constant sound and it was quite deep as well a just tiny little thing. Well, that made a bloody big sound as well, and you can see why it's a huge, great pot leg. I don't know what these really date to, but I think it could be anything from the sort of middle eight, from the sort of medieval onwards. That looks like an early one. Big ballsy sound. Big, big bit of bronze. That. Wow. Well, this is cool too. My God, I had very high hopes of it being a bit Saxon here. It's turning out to be a bit later than that. Okay, we found Saxon, that wonderful coin last time when I was only here for about 10 minutes. And there's loads of Roman stuff here. But I've just found something which I'm thrilled with because it sort of explains to me how these things work. Now, it's something to do with a spur because I found that section before the one with the two holes in it a lot of people put these up on the on forums and the detecting hub and probably facebook pages i don't do facebook but i presume so um saying well, what's this what's this because they're very odd looking they look a bit phallic actually without these but look at this it's got its two the two rings that would have attached it now i don't quite uh, i think that would have god look god only knows we'll have to go back and have a quick look We'll go back to headquarters quickly and I'll explain how it does work. But I've never found the, these two sections that clip on to the actual bit of the spur bar itself. It's something to do with spurs. Um, and I'm absolutely thrilled. That's so cool. Wow. Absolutely brilliant. Very, I think it's really rare to find them like that. Anyhow, look, let's go quickly. Hi there, welcome back. Well, God, I was absolutely thrilled with this because I have found this section before, as I said, the bit that looks, <laughs> does look a bit phallic. Well, it, in, in my mind anyway. They are quite odd when they're by themselves and they do look sort of Celtic in many ways. I mean, they've just got those two little round holes and a little bar and you think, my God, it could be anything. But it is, it's part of a spur. And it dates to probably sort of 1600 to 1700, these ones. Now, I've got loads of stuff I found online I'll show you in a minute. But basically, um, see if I can show you on my foot. <laughs> this bit here attaches like that. 
the spur section comes around there and then the spiky bit comes out like that and these two things would have been attached to would have gone through um leather would have been attached to leather straps one going around the front one going around the bottom and then on the other side which i'll show you in a second there would have been one of the straps would have had a buckle so you could have tightened it all up um, and that's and that's basically how it works now as i said i've found these bits before but i've never found one with the two dangly bits so as you'll see from these illustrations funny enough the best ones came from an american website um I think it's Maryland and Delaware, where these were, were, were very, very similar ones of being found. And that makes complete sense, um, especially as they, are, as they do date from the 17th century. And it's far better than anything I've found from the UK. So, and it really does explain exactly how they work. So this one has just the two sort of stud sections there. And then the other one, on, ran, which went around the other side of the spur, would have had one of those. And one of those would have been a buckle in order to be able to tighten the strap. Now, now this one here, as you can see, is very slightly different because, and they're slightly earlier, the, um, one of the holes is slightly recessed from the other, they go in a sort of diagonal one. But these slightly later ones, which put, let's say 1650, late, late 17th century, are, are much straighter and you have the two bits dangling off like that. And as I said, it's an absolutely brilliant website. It's got all sorts of stuff and all sorts of illustrations, including some old illustrations of how they of, of depicting um, prints from, I, I suppose, 17th century books showing how people would have worn them at the time. I mean, it's absolutely classic. That one's God, he looks. <laughs> I love the way they're sort of they're going around, you know, just sort of round at court, parading off their spurs. So I'll put a link to that website um, down below so you, can so you can have a look. I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It, it explains exactly what's going on with these rather wonderful things. And while I've got you to have a quick look at this Maximian coin, now it's coming out incredibly well. Now, I basically, all I've done is I've cleaned it. I've wiped off as much crud as I could. And then with the brass section of the composite cleaning pencil, I've really, really carefully gone round um, it and, and started cleaning the right hand side. So I can see Aximianus, SP Org, and the beginning of his um, forehead and his nose and chin. And I think that's just come out absolutely incredibly. Um, if you want to see a video of how exactly how I use these, then let me know in the comments and I'll do one on my other channel because it's really, really fun. And, and I've had a lot of success with this brass section. On the reverse, I'm not quite sure what's coming out of it yet. It's probably Genio um, Popular. Um, yes, I think it is. It's, it's Genio Populi Romani or whatever it is. Um, genius of the Roman people. I can just see Arnie at the end there. So I think that's what that is. Even though, look at that. The crust is so thick on it. Um, I mean, and that's not going to come out with water or whatever solution you want to use on these coins. We're not supposed to use tap water. That, I mean, that is absolutely thick. You've got to use something a bit more brutish for it. And just very quickly, because this is a bit of a spoiler, because this coin has, you haven't seen yet, but I unearthed it a bit later. And it's absolutely wonderful. So I won't, I won't um, be too um, long on it because I didn't want to ruin it at the time. But it is Constantine the Great, and you can clearly see Constantinus on that side. Um, and then on this one, it's rather an interesting one. It's it's something like the reverse Principe U Giuliani. And it is, it's Constantine himself as, I think it translates roughly as Prince of Youth or, um, or whatever Principe actually, well, prince, our word Prince comes from the Latin um, word, but I don't know if it's actually necessarily translated in those days as it being Prince. We use it as Prince. But anyway, that's what that is with a, an incredible London mint. But as I said, I won't dwell too long on this one because it comes up a bit later. And, but again, I, I cleaned it with this. So that's what, so that's how that works. Anyhow, we've got to <laughs> come back again. Um, so thank you very much for watching and see you in a minute. Well, I've not found many of these, but I've only found one of these before. 
I am finding some deep things today. This is that I found some a couple of things very close to the surface, including that beautiful Roman coin. But most of it is deep. I mean, that is well, it's a long way down, and they gave a strong signal. Still, it's a William and Mary, and the only one I, other one I found of these. I could only tell it was William and Mary because the nose of one of them was so far to the edge of the coin. But here you can clearly see them both. Um, so Mary in the front, William behind, I think. And we've got Britannia on that side. I don't, I can't for the life of me remember what these date to. It, it's before William became king by himself, I think. So are we talking 1650 or something? 1660? Not sure, maybe a bit late, 1680, let's go for. But that, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Absolutely thrilled, that's made my day. And it's in beautiful condition. And that's just through wear, it's not corroded at all. Wow. Well, Lord knows what this is, but I feel I've seen one before. And I don't think it's particularly old. Um, I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a surprise. Now, it looks like a man with a beard. Is this someone's face? Well, it is, isn't it? Is it hollow? And it looks to be hollow. Um, I, I can see the mud coming out there. I can see his ears and his cheeks and his lips. And I just don't know. As I said, I think I've seen one before. Is it a pipe? Um, yeah, maybe it's the end of a pipe or something. Do they have metal pipes? You would have thought the, the bit near, near your lips would have got a bit hot. Um, I just don't know. God, it's getting really windy. <laughs> um, but that's just... But I, I don't think it's very old, sadly. Well, it's not sadly. I found couple of wonderful things today which aren't that old. I love finding Roman, I love finding Iron Age, I love finding Saxon, don't we all? But you know that William and Mary coin and the spur parts, my, my god, I mean fabulous. But I really want to be finding Roman and Saxon and I just don't think that is either. But he's got one eye there and I think he's missing the other eye. I, I, I'll clean that. Look, I tell you what, um, let's go to headquarters and if we if I come back immediately it's because it's not very grand and I'll tell you what it is another time but let's just go anyway well crikey the jury is still out on this I mean I have no idea originally I thought he's too modern looking he's too um just slightly mm, just slightly post medieval um, it, 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 it can't really be earlier than that. And my pipe theory, I don't think holds, but I thought maybe the tobacco went in like that. Um, and it certainly wouldn't hold because he does have a glass eye. He's got a glass eye there and he's missing one there. And now I found it in that section of the field where all those Roman coins came up. But that does not make it Roman. I mean, it's very misleading. And a lot of people, when they start detecting, do assume a little bit wrongly. Well, I found it in a Roman field where I don't find anything else that's got to be Roman. Well, that rubbish. It, that lends itself to the probability of it being Roman. But you mustn't just go and think, well, it's got to be Roman because I find Roman stuff around it. Or it's got to be Celtic because I found a Celtic coin near it. No, absolutely not. You've got to slightly get out of that mindset. So I'm just basically thinking... Ah, there's no reason I don't I don't believe that it shouldn't be Roman but I just don't think it is I think it's a bit modern looking but I did a very quick search online I just put in a uh, Roman bronze figurine um, and, and, and some slightly crudish things came up as well now I put this on the detecting hub we didn't have an awful lot of luck with it so any thoughts or theories on this would be gratefully accepted part of me thinks it really could be but what it is, is it a vessel thing or something that would have been on the side of something? I don't know. My gut feeling, unless I'm told otherwise, and I'm sure you will and I hope you will, I think it might be Roman. But I don't know why. And I'm not 100%. So that is just brilliant. And he's a little bit scary looking, but I quite like it. I think he brings me luck. So I put him there looking at me. Um, and I've had a bit of luck since I found him. So... <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm quite superstitious as my Catholic upbringing. And just before we leave, this William and Mary, I mean, I'm, 
absolutely blown away by this because I can re it's really really clear through wear not through corrosion sadly corroded enough I can't make out a date on it um, but if I look up William and Mary half half penny here in my spink William the third so William the third does come after William and Mary come first should know this. 1689 to 1694 are William and Mary. Mary Stuart was born in 1662 and married William of, of Orange. And you get these coins with both of them on it. Now, some of them are made in tin and copper, but this one isn't. This is very obviously copper or sort of coppery bronze, copper alloy. And there it is. This one's a 1694 halfpenny. Um, and, uh, and that's the one, effectively. Um, now, interestingly i'm absolutely amazed i have no idea that i mean they're quite valuable if they're in very good condition i mean these range from 75 pounds to 250 um that of, of that coinage the last coinage um i think they probably are no are they all 1694 M maybe haven't really done enough research on it but i'm completely thrilled i don't think that's worth 200 quid but 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 i don't know it's just just a really wonderful coin Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that. Um, and let's go back to the fields quickly. Well, what an incredible day. <sighs> it's another Roman coin. It's the second best one that we, I found today of that big one. I think it's Constantine. I can see um, Sol Invictus or someone on the back or the emperor dragging his captive or whatever it might be. He's standing upright with a standard. And then there's an emperor on that side. I'm not going to... Um, yes, Constant. I think it's Constantine the, the Great. I don't think it's. Um, it just strikes me. I don't think it's his son. Um, SFP Org. So it's definitely a Constantine as Emperor, not as Caesar. Quite often, Constantine II is is there as Caesar, not as Emperor. I think that's an earlier coin. I think that's Constantine the Great, and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. What an absolute beauty. I mean, that is just... Uh, right, my time's almost up. Um, I'm, doing, I'm rushing a bit now, annoyingly. I shouldn't really be. But um, I'm going for a little bit longer. Well, it's another little Roman coin. I mean, it's just amazing. And that's beautiful. Look at that. Don't recognise him immediately. Um, the sun's really low it's hard to get light on these at the moment but it's got the altar and the globe on the back um, it's Constans probably and there's the altar and the globe on the back what a beauty another lovely coin so it's Constans or Constantius I think one of the sons of Constantine, anyway, is Caesar, or his emperor. Depends if there's an org on it or not. Yeah, I think I can see an, an org just at the end there. Well, I think I'm going to end on this. It's a bit of an obvious sounding one. I've dug some wonderful things at depth today. Really cool. And it's just been too... I've dug a lot of lead. I've dug a lot of cartridges. It's almost too much to be setting up in this cold... Um, so I'm sorry there haven't been a, more live digs, but here we go. Hey, you can hear that. It does work, this speaker. It's just very quiet. I'll, I'll keep buying them until I find another good one. The last one that went on the thing. Well, it's very near the surface now. Yeah, that is quite near the surface. I bet it's another piece of lead. Or musket balls. I've found hundreds of musket balls. There it is. Well, hooray. It's another little Roman coin. 
My God, I'm, I think I'd better stop here while I'm in an area. Gosh, that's beautiful and left facing. While I'm in, an, it seems like a bit of a good area and I'm rushing now because I'm running out of time and I've, I've, I've covered a good part of the field and I think I better leave myself the last bit. What a lovely coin to end on. It's an emperor facing left, which in itself is a bit unusual. It's in lovely condition. It's probably Constantine or someone. On the reverse we have um, Oh, I haven't had this one in a while. I think, hooray! It's the emperor dragging the boy from the burning building, I think. Or from underneath the tree. I don't think it's an emperor and captive. They've, they've come out in funny condition, these coins. They're not as good as some of the coins I find in this sort of pasture. They've all got some sort of residue on them. Maybe it's just because they've been... They, well, anyway. What an absolute beauty. And what a cracking coin to end on. Just one of the best days ever. And in this sort of sunshine. And what more could you want? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And see you next time.